welcome back to the channel glad you could join me today today I'm kind of questioning my life decisions um, generally I like working on diesels but there's a few that I'm not a huge fan of there's a few things that I'd much rather do than some things on a Duramax um, one of those is changing a turbo we have a 2007 GMC Sierra it has a turbo where the veins are stuck can't move the veins um, we've went through several uh, tests where we'll try to move the veins and they'll move a certain point and then they'll stick and you can't move them anymore uh, customer was dealing with it for oh he's been dealing with it ever since he bought the truck which has been a couple of years but it's to the point where they're completely stuck now and can't move it uh, some guys will take some cleaner go in there and try to clean them up make them move but this truck has i believe um well let's just look here it was there then it left 271,100 miles on the odometer and uh customer has said he just wants a new turbo installed so i think with uh the amount of miles that it has that's a good idea so on these duramaxes changing a turbo is not just a two-hour job i don't know what book time is on these things but it's pretty extensive underneath that heat shield is where the turbo is at it has two up pipes coming up from each bank as long as the bolts don't twist off it's not terrible but the majority of the time especially with this kind of miles and living in illinois those bolts are not going to come out easily so sometimes you'll end up with even having to take the exhaust manifolds off the side um, on each side drilling out the bolts um, but I use a lot of heat and um, a lot of uh, scratches on my arms to get these things out of here. So we'll take you along, try to uh, give you the best view possible. But this is going to probably be most of the day and maybe even tomorrow getting one turbo out and a new one in. Do better GM. There's better ways. Actually the L5P is a lot nicer. They've got it setting up more toward the center of the engine little easier to get to so yeah this is uh not gonna be fun first thing we're gonna do we're gonna take the air filter housing out i'm going to go ahead and drain the or evacuate the freon not drain it but evacuate it recover it we're gonna recover the freon i'm gonna take that hose off um if you don't have a machine to do it you can actually take this belt off here the drive belt take those that AC compressor and just lay it over off to the side those hoses will flex enough you can do that but since I can evacuate it I'm just going to evacuate it or recover it and I'm gonna take that line off that way it's out of my way and then we'll, we'll have to take that intake off of there um, this hot side uh, down pipe here is gonna have to come off and then we have to drain the antifreeze because we have antifreeze going into the turbo so yeah there's a lot to do or a decent amount to do up top here and then there's a down pipe that we have to take off and then the two up pipes and then there's the mounting bolts then you have the uh, oil drain going back into the engine so yeah this should be fun <laughs> Yes, it's fun. Initiating recovery process as soon as all the satellites get linked up and everything talks back and forth. Okay, recover. Do not say. Already done. No. Alright, starting recovery process. While we're doing that, let's go ahead and get our air, mass air flows unhooked, maybe. Come on. Please come out. Ugh. 
Okay. that clamp right there loosen it make sure it likes to run down through there just run away from me but uh, that thing needs to be loosened and this will come right out of here take it loose here and right down here as you can see right down beside this battery that's leaking battery acid right down through there and we looks like we're gonna there's a clamp right down there and looks like we're gonna have to come up from the bottom to take that loose and then we should be able to pull that pipe right up it's a tight fit but should be able to fit it right up through there take these inner fenders out so we can get to the um, up pipes I've got my system recovered and we're gonna take that hose off and we're also gonna take the inner fender out of this side uh, because GM was stupid and they don't have a antifreeze drain so I usually I usually take it off at this joint right here and then just angle that hose down i mean you're going to make a mess but who would have thought if you don't put a drain into the radiator make a mess it's odd these inner fenders are usually fairly simple uh these mud flaps here do make it a little more difficult but it's not bad not bad compared to a ford so yeah let's get those out and i'll come back when we've got those all out of there all right we're back We've got this, uh, the antifreeze drain down. We've got both inner fenders out. Um, evacuated the system and uh, pulled the hose off. Now, we get started unplugging. There's not a whole lot to unplug here. Most of it is just taking things loose. But uh, I usually, I wanna take uh, the turbo loose here and um, we're gonna have to remove this as well give me a little more room down through there um, it's not hard to take that off so i usually take this off unplug these uh, the way you unplug this one there's a little piece underneath here that slides out that slides out pulling that up so there and this one here you just squeeze and that comes right up off of there move it off to the side 10 millimeter bolts takes that off then you take this and then there's a couple of 12 millimeter bolts over there and that bracket comes off and then it actually has another bracket that's bolted to the head and i usually take that off as well to give me just a little more room because there's a shield on the 
um, up pipe there that's really hard to get off and on. Then we're gonna have to take these three here. Uh, then we'll come loose. Put you guys over here and I'll let you guys see. Watch that. They usually war pretty hard. And it's not a big deal if they twist off. Because I'll leave that for the uh, turbo rebuilder. One. Two. Those didn't twist off. Yay! Okay, and this thing can be an absolute pickle to get out as well. Because nothing wants to fit correctly. Most times that thing's already disconnected. We have the glow plug control module removed. Um, now we're going to have to get down way deep down in there. Get that shield off. We've got to take this shield off. There is, I believe, four bolts holding this shield on. Then we get to take this clamp there's a clamp that holds this and that holds this downpipe to this turbo we'll get all of that removed um, we're gonna have to loosen this uh, transmission dipstick uh, tube have to loosen it so we can move it back to get all of our pipes out through now I have to come out through that way so yeah a little bit of work ahead of us and we'll need to unplug this right here that unmounts from this right here and then unplugs over here on this side so i'll get that all done and then i'll bring you guys back we're back 
Well, I've got everything unhooked except for the lines going to the turbo and the turbo mounting. However, all is not well. So, lights. Every one of these bolts going into the exhaust manifold there has twisted off. My success with getting those out is slim to none. Same way over here. And I actually, as you can see, made it red hot. I don't know, maybe you can't, yeah. You can see that. To the point that it actually started melting it down. And I still twisted it off. So what we're going to do now, uh, this is gonna be a little more work, but, uh, Either way, we're gonna have a lot of work in it. I mean, I'm gonna have to pull these manifolds off. Um, I've got the okay from the customer. We're going to, well, I mean, it would have been a wash because by the time I would have drilled out those hole or those screws and everything, um, we'd be at the price of new exhaust manifolds or more. So GM can get me new exhaust manifolds and gaskets. Um, all the shields and everything so we're going to go that route this is going to delay this truck by a little bit but that's uh part of it um i mean i expected to have some issues just didn't expect to twist five out of the six bolts off on the exhaust manifold i'll usually twist off at least the ones up at the turbo but uh no this one i think I think there was one bolt that I was able to get out of the turbo. All of the others are twisted off. So, uh, we'll get there. It's just going to be a lot of work. So now I'm going to work on uh, removing that turbo. And uh, I'll bring you back whenever uh, we get started pulling that thing out of there. Because it's it's a tight fit in down, down in through there. So I thought I'd show you, some, some people have said that they've had a little issues getting these bolts out of here, uh, the mounting bolts. What I have found works the best, my long extension, a little wibbly wobbly on the end. Mine has a wobbly built in. Um, so there's one in the back here and these things can be pretty tight sometimes they're not bad sometimes they're really tight I'm assuming this will be tight yep everything else has been tight there's one there and there's gonna be one down in here and this is where you'll really need that wobbly one down in and around might have to take it off and let her wobble a little bit. Come on. It's got to be on there and just right. When it breaks loose, it comes loose with a vengeance. Okay, maybe. All right, and then, and this is a 3 8 drive. Down here, there's another one. There's three mounting bolts holding this thing to the motor. So. <laughs> and that's how I have found works the best for me you might have a better option but this is what works for me. half inch drive is usually too large to fit down in between there so that's why i use three eighths and then here again there's that to the 
and I've already loosened the bolts holding the drain turbo drain line down to the motor so everything is unhooked except for the turbo pedestal mounting bolts come loose <coughs> And I'm going to need a magnet, I believe, to get these others loose. Also, you'll want to um, use a blow gun or vacuum or something. Clean all the dirt off back in through here. You don't want any of that dirt to fall down into that turbo return line hole because it'll be wide open to the elements um, as soon as you get this thing lifted up because the, the, and you really don't want dirt into the motor but especially not there because that thing goes straight down to the back side of the camshaft which can go in to the cam bearing and create an engine failure so up we come here take these bolts out is why you want to clean everything because this turbo drain line goes right down to the back side of the cam and any dirt in there is no good all right now we're going to proceed to take the manifolds off and in order to get this side off i believe i have to remove the steering wheel steering shaft to get to the manifold to get it off of there so we're in the home stretch well I'm gonna have a little teaching moment um, so I decided I'd tear this turbo apart I split this the hot side housing off of the uh, turbo um, and we have figured out why this turbo does not build boost at all. Um, this unison ring here is all supposed to be one piece. So this turbo, what, uh, what will usually happen is these things will stick. Um, but what they're supposed to do is your exhaust from your engine comes up through here comes in and according to where your unison ring is situated more of your exhaust will go past the turbine here or more of it will go just come in and straight out the the back as if i get it let's put this thing up here okay so this is this is going out to the exhaust this is coming up from the engine right here bank one and bank two right here go in through here come up and according to where those these things here are situated um, it'll either close off and make every all the air go past this which drives more boost or it will open up and allow air exhaust to come right past here and straight out the exhaust um, hopefully that makes sense on how these things work most of you probably know but i thought it'd be interesting to uh you know just have a little 
learning experience here. Yeah, this is why he didn't have any boost. Interesting, I always enjoy this, finding a smoking gun. All right, well, we're ready to go back together with this thing. We've got the new exhaust manifolds in there. As you can see, poor lighting, sorry. Um, we've got a new exhaust manifold on that side. The guards haven't come in, um, heat shields. We can go ahead and put everything back together. This is a brand new, not used, not rebuilt, but a brand new Garrett OEM turbocharger. It is also very nice and shiny. So, yeah, brand new. Uh, very economically priced, I might add. And it comes with the new sensor, position sensor. So, no need to worry about that. And, uh, yeah, we just got to get some sw things switched over. Um, I have to switch over this drain pipe. And I've got to switch all of our antifreeze lines there. Um, this bracket here needs to be switched over. And yeah, then we're ready to go back in. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, uh, I mean, the reverse is, or just reverse of the way we took everything apart. So I'll bring you guys back when I've got everything together and uh we'll get this thing fired up and it should run much better for the customer um we do have a few items to fix here uh i found down here right there um i don't have a light here where i'd show you but uh right here we've got some wires that are rubbed raw with uh this shield here the yeah the inner fender words um so we're gonna go ahead and fix that while we're in there uh no sense in having that get worse and causing problems down the road so yeah get everything put back together and should be good to go well as you can see the truck has moved back a little bit we've got a mess but the turbo is installed. Everything is hooked up except for uh, the AC has not been recharged yet. I do have the antifreeze topped off. It's good to go. Um, I believe I've put up a video prior uh, telling you how to fill these systems on these. But uh, right here, there is a bleeder screw. Take that out. And until antifreeze comes out of there, put that back in, fill her up with antifreeze. And you'll have to do maybe a little bit, uh, add a little bit more after you get the thing back together and running and uh, the heat cycle. But uh, yeah, shouldn't be too bad if you do it that way. I just see I left my wallet up there on the uh, windshield wiper. Hmm, interesting. Okay, um, what we have to do now is get a scan tool All right, we're back with our scan tool. Let's see, we are in a GMC. Key on, engine off, automatic ID. Seriously, I bet it does. Let's see, this is going to be a 2006 or seven, 2007, I believe. Nope, it's a 2006. It is a Sierra four-wheel drive. Okay. 
This thing has automatic. I know it does. Whatever. For some reason, my snap-on skin tool is not cooperating with me. Automatic transmission. All right. What we want to do, since we changed the turbo on this thing, we've got to go in here and we have to, um, not there. Uh, we have to go in there and yes, turbocharger learn. So we have to relearn our turbo because the computer needs to see, needs to know what the range is of this new turbo. And then it will take the range, calculate, and then it, that way it knows how to control the thing um, in between the zero and 100%. So, turbocharger learn, it does a sweep. All right, so, on. Oh, engine coolant temperature too low. All right, well, we'll take this thing outside and we'll get the turbo, or the temperature up. All right, truck's been sitting here idling for a little while. Um, we're up to 100 and, uh, let's look here. Coolant, 131 degrees. Let's see if that's hot enough. I don't remember what it's supposed to be. It's either over 130 or over 160, I think. There it's going. It went. As you can hear, it did what it needed to do. Now, let's come back in here and we'll go to our codes menu and we'll show the codes that this thing was throwing for the turbo before I go ahead and, come on, serious, please go, why? Ah, okay, try this again. Display codes. D to C display. Why? Okay, so we've got a bunch of uh, codes here, um, but what we were really after, so it's got a several glow plugs that are broke off and not working. Um, but what we're after and what you'll see with these co or the turbo codes um you'll see you have a ah come on a p2563 p003a which is a uh, turbo boost control position not learned that um is because of the uh the turbo it couldn't move the turbo the veins in the turbo if i get it said right so there's these three that we're watching so you'll have boost control position sensor performance codes you'll uh, have boost um, codes a lot of times um, this one did not have which is surprising uh, the engine coolant temperature these thermostats must be stuck open so it's see it's trying to see a rise in temperature at a certain rate and it's not seeing that and so then it throws this code here it could also be because uh, we had um, the system open but uh, we're gonna go ahead and clear these codes and should take care of a lot of the codes for Oh, not engine off. Should take care of a lot of, or all the codes, honestly, for the turbo. Continue. Codes menu. Display codes. Um, probably won't be here this time, but uh, yeah. Anytime that the glow plugs um, are used, it will throw a check engine light. Uh, customer knows about it this thing runs good without them there's a couple of broken glow plug or one maybe one I think that's broke so uh, that's pretty extensive to try to get those replaced so we have turbo we have 
no leaks i've been watching for leaks we don't have any leaks there um, i did go ahead and fix that wiring issue down there um yeah we've got this thing uh, back together i think we're ready to go take it on a test drive and then we'll come back and recharge the ac and see what's going on there he said he was having some trouble with the ac as well it was full of freon when i took it apart so yeah not sure what we've got going on here <sighs> Starting sequence. <sighs> you know it'd be a good idea if I'd close the hood. Oh my goodness. It's been a long day and I don't have haven't had lunch yet and it's three o'clock in the afternoon. So I do like to let my engine sit and idle for a while anyway after you uh, put a new turbo on it. You don't really want to get onto them real hard. Um, I, I like to put some time on it, let the oil warm up, let the turbo kind of break in per se. And uh, before you get all over it, um, I don't like to rev them up, don't like to speed them up too much at all. We're probably about 10 to 15 minutes after you start the thing. So, yeah, it's uh, just, I don't know. I feel like it's better for the turbo. I also uh, did pre-lube the turbo. I put about a, I don't know, a cc or two of oil in the top of the turbo there where the line comes into the top. Oof. And, uh, you know, just give it a little oil in case it's been sitting on the shelf for a while um, they should be kind of pre-lubed but it's always a good idea to just add a little more oil those turbos spin pretty fast and you don't want to run them dry so yeah um, yeah I'll, uh, I think we're good I mean this thing's definitely got boost um, I can feel it, I can feel the turbo respond, I can hear it respond. So, we're good. I'll uh, get the data pulled up here and let you guys see that, just, you know, so that you guys can see that I'm not lying to you. Uh, data. Manipulate air pressure. Yeah, we've got boost. Definitely have boost. Well, we'll go ahead and close out this video here. I want to thank you guys for watching. I know this was kind of jumped around. I didn't show everything that I did, but uh, it would have been a really long video if I would have done that. So um, I do apologize for not, you know, going into great detail about everything that I did, but try to explain what I did. Um, but we do have turbo boost um, the turbo moves the way it's supposed to the veins move so yeah we'll close this video out I want to thank you guys for watching I appreciate it as always you guys have a great day and uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe it helps me out a bunch thank you very much